everyone, Tammy Trier, TrierWilderness.com. It is an absolutely beautiful and gorgeous day today. Had I planned ahead or planned differently, we'd be outside today. This is my absolute favorite time of year. I love fall and we are heading into it very rapidly. Um, I'm a little late today, so I apologize. So hopefully you guys can all jump on like you normally would, but I was spending some time with a friend this morning and um, she needed it and I continued to fellowship with her. So we're a little late. Good morning, Chad and Tammy and Shelly. I love you all. I am praying for you all. Good morning, good morning. And uh, I hope your weather is as beautiful where you are as it is here today. Like I just said, I would, I would absolutely love to be outside. Um, the mountain man is doing some uh, pretty noisy stuff out there today so it's probably good I am inside but um, it is gorgeous this is my favorite time of year this is that pumpkin spice pumpkiny wonderful wood aromas out in the wilderness it's just that perfect time of year I love it I love it I love it and I could sense it coming on for a while now and I wanted to share with you guys some updates Oh, rainy and cool. It was supposed to rain today, so knock on wood, we've got sunshine. That means I can wash when I'm done. <laughs> but, you know, last week we talked a lot about prayer and perseverance and the importance of staying prayerful and the importance of believing and trusting. And, you know, God parted the Red Sea, and we need to remember that. We need to really, really remember that. And just think about how much God blessed the Israelites through that whole scenario because that's what I feel he's doing right now. And I'm going to share more with you. Shelly says it is sunny now, but the clouds are supposed to roll in later today. Yeah, it's that, it's that time of year. That's what you get is that, that unusual mix. And for us here in the Pacific Northwest, we haven't seen much clouds or rain. It's been a lot of sun and very dry. Um, it's been a wonderful summer though, and uh, it progresses into this, uh, these nice cool temps. I just love being able to layer. I, I love this time. But God has been really blessing us in tremendous ways. And you know, we talked about praying and, and how, how our perseverance does pay off. He does answer, but he doesn't always answer the way we are expecting him to answer. Good morning, Miss Diana. And that is very true for us. Um, last week after our um, live, the mountain man joined and he shared his perspective, which was really awesome. Um, and I'm hoping I can get him to do more of that. No layering here. It's going to be hot again at 92 degrees. You can keep that, sister. <laughs> I don't... I. The older I get, the less I like the heat. I still love the heat, and I love being out in the sun. I, I am so solar powered, but I really enjoy these temperatures. But, um, you know, we, you guys have been following us. You know that we have been focusing on getting this place sold and um, really feeling we were following God's direction in getting this finished and putting it on the market. And, you know, we don't feel like we've... We've gone off track. We feel like we've been following his lead. But Thursday, last Thursday, the mountain man came down and he says, God gave me Hebrews 6.15. And I didn't actually uh, prepare to read that to you. But it's about Abraham and Sarah. And um, it's about waiting. And what's really crazy is, you know, God does this for both of us, and a lot of times he will confirm it mutually with us, which is really, really fabulous, really a great way to get confirmation that we are on the right track and that we are, and, and that's what we pray for, is for God to do that so that we know that we are following his lead and not ours. And it, it says that Abram waited patiently and he received what God had promised. Well, don't you know, when I opened up my devotional for that day, it was on the same topic and the same on Abram and Sarah and on their need to be patient and to wait on God. And at that point, we just got such a great peace 
um, you know, it's, it's late in the season to, for somebody to want to live here and, and undertake this right now. Um, in our mind, that's unlikely. It still could happen. But we're feeling like God was saying, okay, now it's time to wait. Now it's time to wait on me and I'm going to show you. And he has. Since that day, doors have been flying open. Um, we had the mountain man's welder for sale. We needed to sell that in order to pay off our propane debt and to be able to pre-order enough propane for this winter. So huge celebration. Propane has been ordered. The welder sold on Sunday and when he went and took care of that, he also got a job with the fella. So we have another job, more work, more income. But we, with the welder selling, we were able to purchase some food for our larder and we were able to pay off the propane and pre-order. Now we just need to pray that the rains hold off, that the propane can be delivered on the 25th. Um, I like to have things done way ahead of time. We are very organized people. We, are, we plan way ahead. So it was getting very intimidating stepping into winter being that unprepared. And um, the mountain man got a break in the job he was working on. So because of that break, he's been out foraging firewood. So we now have extra firewood back here. So he's getting that comfort and peace that he needs. Um, Cause that's something that he heavily focuses on is making sure that we're prepared for winter, which is our subject partially for today is winter preparedness. And you know, heading into winter, no matter where you are, you've got to consider what your needs are. We don't shop every week. We don't shop every month. Um, we try to have our larder full so that we can live out of it through winter and not have to worry about running out if we can't. Um, hunting season is upon us and something else that we are selling looks like it might sell on Thursday, which would give us our hunting licenses, which would enable us to fill our freezer. You're going to have to forgive me today because I don't know what's going to happen here. I've got a dog in heat, so she's out here. The other one's locked in the bedroom, and he starts to get a little funny. He's the one that was rolling around making all those pleasant noises the other week. So it might, I might have struggles here, but we're just going to have to roll with it. But what I'm getting at here with all this stuff is when we wait on God, even though we don't see answers to our prayers, He's still working and we got to trust that. And that's why I have such a positive outlook and such a peace and a comfort through all of this. And don't get me wrong, the last three, four weeks have been the toughest weeks all year for me. Um, and I think for the mountain man too, just um, the tension of moving into winter and not being prepared. But at the same time, God feeds the sparrows he's going to take care of us. So we weren't, we weren't losing faith or trust in him. We were, we were more in our flesh and concerned that we aren't doing our part kind of thing. Um, but we, we, we had a lot going on. We had a lot of things that needed to get done, all pressing. Um, you couldn't prioritize them because they all had equal priority and they it was just very chaotic so um and we had some new things going on with the mountain boy that required a lot of my time uh, but monday we took care of that I, i'm not going to say anything yet i want to make sure we're confirmed before we um announce that but the mountain boy has a absolutely fantastically amazing i can't give it enough good words um opportunity opening up to him um, it'll be a very life-changing uh, transition for him, but this is going to be very, very awesome. So these last three weeks have been really, really pressing. Um, but just to give you examples on, on how God works, you know, we got that Bible verse on Thursday. I got the devotional Thursday. We got a little bit of peace, and then all of a sudden things just started selling. The things that we've listed um, for sale that weren't moving started to sell, which enabled us to progressively move into um, better areas of preparedness, uh, better comfort, knowing that, you know what, we're not going to sell this right now. We're going to be here for winter. God's going to work it out, um, and we, we will not lose the house. We will be here for winter, and amazingly enough, as it continues to roll, another door that opened was a very big job for the mountain man. 
and and for me because actually in order to do this job it's going to require the both of us so um god is providing everything we need is it what we wanted and what we asked for and what we were anticipating no but he provides and it's that that faith like a child it's that constant perseverance it's that patience in his timing and the last one is the hardest part i know you will all agree um good morning miss holly and diana says a quote from toby mac that is now on my desktop if you want god to close and open doors let go of the doorknob i know is that not an awesome awesome statement you know we hang on tight for what we want and don't give him the opportunity to move and you know, this whole time we've been praying for God's will. We wanted to sell. We've been asking for what we what we needed, but we were also asking for his will, and his will is unfolding. And whether that means that this will sell in spring, I don't know. What will happen though is that because of the job that we've been offered, we should be able to finish the rest of what needs completed through winter enabling this to be completely finished, more saleable, and um, already on the market for when spring hits. So um, I think it's, it's exciting in a way that we have been given confirmation that we can relax in our surroundings, that we can relax in his arms. And not that we couldn't before, but there was a lot of pressure. There's a lot of pressure to get things around, get things um, in order, know what we're gonna do with our with our, our belongings. Um, and also, you know, with him, with us being self-employed, we had to be careful what jobs we took on because the jobs, um, if they were too large and, they, and this sold, we would be upside down and sideways and having to do so much to make things work. So we've really had to be very cautious in our planning and at times we couldn't even plan. So it, it made day-to-day -day living a little consuming. Um, okay, a lot consuming. Uh, Shelly says, I am also such a wonderful opportunity. Okay, they were talking about Austin. Tammy said she was so excited for Austin. Um, I, I'll say this, Austin has an opportunity to go into the field that he has desired his whole life um, and be able to uh, get certified. Um, the doors have opened for him. So um, Monday we signed him up, now we wait. Um, so I'll, I will share more and all the details probably next week because things are actually moving really fast. Um, I would like to ask for prayer um, so that uh, God provides enough that I can go on our last hurrah with Austin and uh, last road trip and get him to the facilities he needs to go to, give him a little peace and comfort knowing that I'm joining him on that and um, seeing him off. So I know it will be good and healthy for both of us. And I know God knows our needs and I know God will provide for that. But that is our prayer. And guys, if you need prayer, please, please, please list it below. Um, God answers prayer. And the power that this community has with our prayers has been amazing to watch things unfold for everyone that has requested. It's just been amazing. And for those of you that, you know, your prayers aren't being answered, don't lose faith and keep believing because God never stops working. He is always out there working. He is always working behind the scenes. If you can't feel him and see his hand, you've got to trust and believe. He has, he has parted the sea. He has brought manna down from the heavens. He's provided water through a rock. Guys, he can do anything. And we have that power through our prayer going to him, asking for prayers. And I want to share something with you then um, a little later. A friend of mine shared a devotional that will go right along with that today. He is Jehovah Jireh, or Jireh the, the God who provides, praying he does so for you and for Austin. And for you as well, my friend. Um, there is a prayer list down below. You can pray for them individually. You can pray for them as a whole. 
Um, a lot of people don't share uh, their their direct needs, and that's okay because God knows. So by lifting them in prayer, we are we are meeting their needs. And as a community, as brothers and sisters, that is our job to help lift others. So. Um, Please do pray for uh, those in our community. Um, I wanted to mention a couple today. Um, there are new ones that have been added, and hopefully they ended up on here. Yes. Um, if you could pray for my friend Courtney, um, I would greatly appreciate it. And also, uh, Courtney that joins us on a regular basis is still sick. If you could please pray for her as well. And um, there is a little girl named Ellery that is going through cancer treatments right now. Oh my gosh, she is a doll baby. She is so precious and uh, a real fighter, very strong-willed young little girl. If you look it up, um, you can find her by going to Ellery's Army. Jill asked us to pray for her. And um, again, if you could keep the Johnson family and uh, the March family and the Spooner family in your prayers, as well as Mimi and Taylor and Faith, and the Mills family as well. And if you could also keep Tammy and her family in prayer, Diana and her family in prayer, Kelly and her family, and Chad as well. That would be absolutely fantastic, and Mona and Ken. Um, but there is a long list, um, and Pat and Mark, uh, who are both going through chemo treatments, if you could just continue to lift them, they are doing well and uh, would love to see them make it out here for hunting season this year. So that is my big prayer for them. But one of the things that we were talking, I wanted to talk about today, um, you know, this is preparedness month and winter preparedness is important. Um, having the things you need on hand rather than waiting uh, to the last minute to get them is important. That's why our panic was in place. Um, the propane, we could have, I mean, we could really go without it. The biggest thing that there that there's a concern for there is it operates our freezer. And although our freezer is not full, I we would hate to lose any of the meat that we have harvested that's in the freezer. Um, being able to cook, there are varying other ways I can always cook. When my wood stove is going, I can always cook on my wood stove. Um, but the freezer was the big concern. Um, it's always nice to have hot water as well. Um, we could improvise with that as well. We've got plenty of kettles and we've got a nice big clawfoot tub. So, you know, there are many ways to work around things. You can also solar heat water for showers. So that would have been the big concern, but our freezer was, and, um, just knowing that we weren't going to have any waste was really important. Good morning, Sanford and Nikki. And to be able to, to take care of that was a really huge thing and also just seeing God's hand at work. So, um, but another thing is physical fitness. You know, when it comes into the winter months, you've got a lot of things that you've got to be physically, physically involved in with uh, snow removal. And, and even physical fitness is true in your summer months with your gardening. For those of us that homestead, Physical fitness is a part of our lives. I think that it's uh, part of everything we do. But I wanted to mention it because there's so many people that do have desk jobs and that live in the city and that aren't as active maybe as we are with our gardening and our foraging of our um, firewood and, and, the, and just some of the chores on our homestead. Working with animals, you know, that all is things that keep us more physically fit. When we talk about preparedness, I, I hear so many people that are getting their go bags ready and have them by the door, but when it comes to actually having to pack those things out in an emergency situation, most people aren't fit enough to carry them a long distance. Being fit is important because it takes us into our older years and keeps us healthier. It keeps our bodies um, running like a, a well-oiled machine. The more we stay active and fit, the better we are in our month to month and season to season situations as well as in a preparedness situation. I have been rebuilding my health for the last three years. It's a very large priority for me because I was stripped. I wasn't able to do anything. It gave me a lot of empathy for people that are flat on their backs, that are unable to do things, that deal with chronic illnesses and pains. And I, I already had empathy for people like that, but it certainly does give you a realization of, 
of what day to days can be like for people and I have a strong will and I want to encourage that in all of you that are struggling to keep your strong will and to keep pushing and to keep doing things progressively be be perseverant in your healing and in your strengthening because it will help you so greatly in life uh, the healthier we are the longer we live and that may be good for some good, not good for others I always say I want to climb the mountains into my 80s but the mountain man's like I don't want to live that long so <laughs> but I I feel so much better when I am healthy when I'm at a good weight um, when I'm active when I eat well you know all those things play a role and that plays a role in our preparedness because if we are not healthy and well we are not prepared for anything that may come our way so it's really important and a very important aspect of preparedness that people kind of tend to disengage from and I know many of you uh, I know Tammy has been out walking I walk every day I try to ride bike as well we had a very heavy hot spell for a while there and I hadn't been riding um, and I've been so crazy so I do make sure I get my my uh, walks in I do lift weights I do a lot of stretching stretching is really important to keep your muscles hydrated and also functioning well um, how many of you take time to exercise daily or weekly uh, I, I just feel it's a very important habit to create And the more we do that, the more we are able to regain our health from illnesses. If I would have been active and I would have been um, sedentary, I would not be where I am today. So many other negative things would have set in. So just taking one day at a time and doing what you can one day at a time is extremely important to pull you out of illness and to improve your health, but also um, to just give yourself better health as you're, as you're aging and, and also uh, going about your, your life. Um, I'm gonna read this devotional because it goes along with everything that I've been talking about. There's so many avenues to physical fitness and being fit. It's also part of the mind. The mind plays a huge role in being fit, that it's not just a physical aspect of things, it's also our minds. And the healthier our minds are, the healthier we are as well. You've heard me talk about it all year long, about how we talk to ourselves, the negative things we say, um, just giving ourselves mental breaks throughout the day. Um, those things can all really play a huge role in being totally fit. Um, another thing is one of the guys that I, I watch and, and follow on a regular basis and have been following for a long time is Michael Hyatt and part of his schedule I know I've mentioned this before is that he takes a 20 minute nap after his lunch every day it's like a power nap and one of the things I found that has greatly helped me through my healing process and just um, being able to cope with all the chaos. I mean, you guys see me living happily through the chaos, but it is an effort. It is a great effort to do that. It takes a lot of perseverance and self-control to do the things I do throughout my day to make sure I am finding peace and joy in my situation. And if I wouldn't do that, I wouldn't be this happy person that you're seeing every week. It takes a lot of work and a lot of effort. And what I do is I lay flat. When my body gets sore and tired, or I feel like I'm disheveled or tired, I lay down. I just lay down for 15, 20 minutes and either read or just veg. I don't, I don't sleep well during the day, but there are times where I will just totally crash. And I will sleep. Of course, the dogs don't let that last very long because I'm at their level. So, but doing that is really important. Uh, if you're a real pusher, um, if you're dealing with um, health issues, sometimes we push too much through those health issues and we need to just be kind to ourselves and be good to our bodies and just take 10, 15 minutes, whatever you can, and just lay flat. Um, that horizontal position, taking the weight off your feet and off your legs and off your back, 
and just giving your shoulders a rest and just giving yourself a mental break is so very important. And I have seen the benefits over and over again. And I just want to encourage that because it may sound funny. I always thought people talking about taking naps during the day, I thought they were nuts. But you know what? It has become something that's very important to me. Where's the mountain man? Ah, oh, there I got it. The see more button wasn't working. But here we go. Diana says, we used to, but have not the last couple of years. Stretching is where I need to start. I am... I am taking short walks several times a day. It's just so stinking hot here. Yeah, I hear that. Well, you're detoxing at the same time because I know you're sweating. And in those temperatures, you're sweating just sitting still. But yeah, getting back into things and stretching is really important, especially if you're not doing anything else. At least stretching helps keep your muscles hydrated, keeps them limber, keeps your body functioning. Because when you don't do anything, everything just starts to get tight. Everything gets tight, it gets sore, you have injury because you're allowing things to basically seize up. So movement is important, walking is important, and, and stretching, and drinking lots of water. Okay, let's see if I can get Tammy's to open up. Ha, got it. Okay, I try to keep moving, haven't been walking as much. I have found the more I sit, the more I want to sit. If I keep moving, I want to keep moving. <laughs> yes, I, I totally get that. I totally get that. There are times when I'm afraid to resign to sitting as well for the same reason. Sometimes you hit that point where you know if you sit down, you're going to pass out or be there a while. So I totally get that. And, and to keep moving, you know... I know, I know the things you do in your day, Tammy. It's like me. I actually, I haven't, I haven't edited it yet, but a couple weeks back, I did a day in the life of Tammy, and I recorded everything I did. And at the end of the day, I was like, good grief. I was making my own self dizzy. You know, you just, and that's what we do. We tend to just keep moving. We have tasks that need done. We have a to-do list. Most of us do our to-do list in an order that we are, are moving in a good direction, um, maybe progressing from one end of the house to the other. And doing that is helpful in keeping us moving. However, a lot of times that movement is stressful movement because we're stressing our mind and our bodies trying to get all this stuff done. So if we can still pause momentarily, it, it does really, really help in the process. Um, getting out in this beautiful weather is going to be just so priceless. And I have, I probably have about a month with the mountain boy, if, if I'm lucky. And with this weather setting in, we always walk anyway, and we take the dogs for walks, but it has been so hot here that if we didn't make it out in the early morning for a walk, we weren't able to take them out because it just, it does them in. The heat was just too much for them because we only have two water holes and they're a mile away on either depending whatever direction we go in and it just gets to be too much for them they get too too dehydrated and, and just too hot so we've been trying to get out a little more and the mountain man and i did a fun thing the other night which i love to do he 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 prompted it which was awesome because he knows how much i love doing it i love going for night walks especially full moon night walks and we have we have coyotes and wolves out here but I don't really care. It's just nice to be able to get out and to be in the wild and in the wilderness and, and the quiet. So we went for a night walk a couple nights ago and it felt so good. Shelly, I'm trying to open yours. Ha, got it, okay. Shelly says, I have not been doing the exercises I know I should, but it is really hard to do with my health issues. I have been pushing myself to get things done with the renovations and preserving foods. I know you have and you know, and, and Shelly could use some great prayers too. Um, like Shelly said, she has some health issues and uh, she's doing a lot of preparedness things as a result and uh, is really tiring her. Actually, those are the, the footsteps of the mountain boy who just totally dissed everybody. You didn't even say hello. Hi. <laughs> He's hiding at the staircase there. Chad heard you, you s stepping in. I'm trying to be quiet because he told me to. Well, you don't have to be quiet. You can say hello. So I can holler at the top of my lungs? Well, no, you might scare everybody, <laughs> but ha ha. Tammy said hello, Shelly said hello, Chad heard you walking in. 
I've been telling everybody we're going to be celebrating some good stuff for you. When we get the confirmation, you're going to have to join me and share with everybody what you got going on. Okay. Okay. All right. That's funny, Chad, though, that you heard the footsteps. You guys, that's, you, you guys have, have signature footsteps. I love it. Um, but, yes, play, signature. pray, huh? Signature. Signature footsteps. They can hear your footsteps coming in the house. Um, but, yes, please pray for Shelly. Um, and you know what? Sometimes I was in the same boat. I was very, very limited. I couldn't sit. I couldn't stand for long periods of time. I had to lay flat. The only thing that I could do that kept me going and that was the exercise that I could do for probably over, well, it was well over a year, um, was just walking. But walking, I started progressing and started progressing and um, managed to up my walks from a half a mile a day to five miles a day. And um, when things would be really stressful for me, I'd walk more. And the one, one month... In my, in my walking, I walked 120 miles. That blows me away. How is that possible? But I did. I walked 120 miles in a month. And, and again, it's just progressive perseverance in, in, in taking efforts to stay healthy and to heal ourselves. And Shelly, your time will come where you are able to get back into it. Right now, you just need to take care of you and your body. And, and that sometimes can be a very hard lesson, is uh, having, having to do that and having to rest where God has us, because that I can definitely relate to. That, that initial on, flat on my back, I was really struggling with that till I realized that God had me where he wanted me and where he was going to use me. And he did, and he did, and I found peace in that. And thankfully, some of us can adapt to our surroundings a little better than others. I think it's... I think that my adaptability is because of what I have walked through. Um, I wasn't always this way. I wasn't always very patient. But um, at, as I've walked through the different circumstances in my life, God has granted me more patience and the ability to adapt to those type of things. So God takes us through everything he takes us through for a reason. You know, sometimes through our walk, we end up with empathy and are able to help others uh, go through similar walks. Um, sometimes it's so that he can use us where we are and take us to a place where, where he could use us so much greater than he would have otherwise. So it's just a process of learning, you know, to rest in those places, but um, definitely focus on, on our, our health, our well-being, our preparedness and and molding it all together finding a good balance that is always hard and as we talked about last week with preparedness it can be really hard because we may not have the funding to do the things we want to do but we have the desire to be prepared and to find balance so sometimes that means you know looking at things a different way and like we mentioned last week being able to learn as much as we can when we can't afford to prepare ourselves in other ways so there's many things we can always do, um, but focusing on finding a balance, focusing on uh, preparedness and fitness and health, and thinking about all those things in our day to day. You know, a lot of people just prepare seasonally or they prepare um, and, and more so prep than they do think about the, the long term of things. And that's what I want to teach you guys is the long-term preparedness is preparing daily for your future. And, you know, like Shelly and, and Kelly and Tammy are dehydrating food and fermenting food and, and canning food and, and foraging things. And that's where I see that that's a long-term, that's a, a future preparedness. That's not just a, a current Preparedness. That's a level of preparedness that's taking you into future days, future years, depending on, on how much you're putting away. So the more we learn and the more we prepare and the more we focus on not just our immediate needs, but our future needs, that is something that I think that really helps us um, grow. Um, Thinking ahead, like I said, when we planned on living here and living this way, our goal was to have all the tools we needed so that 
if everything in the world fell apart, we could still operate day to day because we have the tools and the know-how. And, and sometimes that's where you got to start. Sometimes that's where you need to start to be able to start building on, on your skills and your abilities and also your financial aspect of things. What are your preparedness struggles um, in your walk right now? What do you what do you struggle with wrapping your mind around? What do you struggle with to accomplish? Um, what are what are your hurdles? Share that with me. And I want to share a couple things with you here. Um, I gave myself some good news today. Miss uh, Kelly shared her devotional with me this morning and it is just so so dead on to what I've been talking about it says then he spoke a parable to them Ooh, you know what I almost think that I didn't get it all let me see if I I might have cut some of it off but you guys share with me what are your hurdles what are your struggles um, and what are some things that you would like to learn what are things that you want to accomplish in your um, preparedness uh, aspects of things. Nope, I have it all. Okay. So, then he spoke a parable to them that men always ought to pray and not lose heart. That's Luke 18, 1. How long does it take before God answers a prayer? Is there a point when we just give up asking? Even if we find prayer and how to receive an answer, so unclear at times, the Bible assures us persistence will pay off. The Lord gave two parables illustrating this, and I, I love these, I love these, and that is me. I am like burning a hole in, in God's ears on a daily basis. Luke 18 tells the story of a widow seeking justice in her situation. The judge seems a harsh man with little regard for God or man, yet because of the widow's constant pleading, he took action on her behalf. It was the only way to get her to go away. <laughs> the parable goes on to say that God will respond to his chosen ones more speedily than this judge. So although the judge was gruff, you know, God will never look at us and answer our prayers just to get rid of us. But persistence definitely pays off and persistence matters. The more we come to him and lay our concerns on him, you know, he does answer, he does hear. The second parable on persistence is found in Luke 11. A man has a traveler come to his house at midnight and he has no food to feed his guest. He goes to a friend and asks for three loaves of bread. Even though they are friends, the man is unwilling to rise from his bed to help him. Yet because of his persistent knocking, the man finally gets up and gives him bread. We sometimes feel God isn't listening or just won't answer. It seems like we have been praying for a very long time to no avail. And let's consider two things, God's will and his timing. God's will, now this is the confidence that we have in him that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petition that we have asked of him. That's 1 John 5, uh, 14 through 15. James 4, 3 tells us that sometimes we are asking with the wrong motives. Our hearts must be free of anger, bitterness, or revenge. Ask God to reveal if your request is from a pure, pure motives or pure heart and is aligned with his word. We must be willing to submit um, to his will. Isaiah 55, 8 and 9 tells us his thoughts and his ways are higher than ours. And God's timing... We may not understand why God delays in answering our prayers, but we must trust his plan is ultimately best for us. Claim the words of Habakkuk 2.3 as assurance God will bring it to pass at the right time. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it will speak and it will not lie. Though it tarries, wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not tarry. We don't... We don't know what God is doing behind the scenes, but we should pray without ceasing. That's 1 Thessalonians 5, 17. Be patient in your persistence. The prayer, give me wisdom, Lord, to determine your will in my life. As I put my petition before you, keep my motives pure. Help me to wait with patience for your perfect timing in my situation. 
Even though I may not understand your purpose in what is happening, I can trust that it is ultimately for, for my good. Now I want to share this. I shared with you that when God uh, brought to us um, that Bible verse last week, it, it did give us a great comfort. So there is great comfort when you have communication and direction from God. I will admit that. And, and I know that firsthand. Because otherwise you're living without direction and it's, it's, it's very confusing at times what he's expecting of us. But don't give up. Be perseverant in your prayers. Be perseverant in your trust and keep believing. I can't tell you that more. Even if God wouldn't have given us that direction last week, that is where our minds are. We are believing him, we are trusting him, and, and we know that in his timing, he will show us things. Now, you guys also watch. That was a long period of time. That has been a, I don't want to say a three-year process, but you could watch us from January till now and see that we didn't really have, you know, we were trusting God, but we weren't really seeing a whole lot of doors opening. He was blessing us. He was blessing us constantly. And that's and, and that I want to make it a point too to share with you that you need to look for those blessings every day. If you are in a place where you are you are struggling with patience, look for those blessings because those blessings are the stepping stones. He may not open doors, he may not give you movement, he may not give you direction, but those blessings are the stepping stones that you've got to hang on to because his timing is always right. And his will is always better than ours. Like I said, you know, we were, we, we were praying to be out of here by winter. Like I said, that could still happen. Um, and, and if it does, we're ready because we've been preparing for this. We've been packing. We've been um, moving things around. We've been selling things. We've been downsizing. We've been considering what we will do with our things and the different scenarios if they were to unfold. So, you know, having an idea of what direction you will go in, having an idea of how you will handle things is important. And it can be really hard talking about those things when you don't have clear direction. And there's so many things that could happen and so many things that in directions things could unravel. It can be very um, stressful to talk about those things, but they need to be discussed and you need to have a plan and you need to at least have some idea how you can do your part while God is working in the background. And that is what we did. But we never gave up. We never, we never um, questioned God. We never were mad at God. Um, it didn't mean that we didn't have, you know, we weren't worried. We weren't anxious, but we were growing tired and weary. Um, just because we kept working with no direction. Um, and, and tiredness and weariness is, is normal. And so is being anxious and, and, and that. You don't want to waste your time worrying though because worry doesn't solve anything, especially if it's all stuff that you can't control. And this has been all things that we couldn't control. We could not have done anything different. So please, please, please don't waste energy and and the space you have in your mind to worry about things that are out of your control and just give them to God. That is how we are coping. That is how we are persevering. That is how we are walking this out. And that is also how we have great faith because when you fall into that worry trap, the enemy seeps in. The enemy seeps in and things just grow to a very large snowball of negativity and ugliness. And, and um, wait do you see what God gave me this morning. Let me see what you guys have said. I know I saw, here we go. Diana says, congratulations, Austin. I know you'll do very well. Thank you, sweet friend. And Diana also says, oh, I'm so glad that's working now. Um, right now we have, we are having to live out of our larder. We are grateful we have it, but it will be great when we can start adding to it again. I hear that we were able to add a little bit this week to ours and it was a, it was a really good comforting feeling. I know that. And 
when we live this way and when we live with a larder and we live uh, in a preparedness method, when that starts to empty, it does give great concern. But we've also got to remember in those situations, and that's what I've been trying to tell myself, is that, you know, as much as we are to be prepared, God wants us to focus on him and trust that he will keep us taken care of. So there comes a time where you've got to switch from your preparedness mindset to the mindset of trust and believing. And I kept saying to you guys that it is absolutely incredibly amazing that I go into my freezer right now and I'm still finding food. Because um, I've said, and I've been saying that for a couple weeks, I had 10 meals of chicken in there. That was how many weeks ago? And I'm still able to pull food out of there. God, I'm believing in the five loaves of bread and the three fish that God does provide. God does stretch our food. God does stretch us. He stretches us in great ways. But that stretching of us is no different than stretching our muscles to keep them hydrated. He is stretching us to keep us thirsty for him. How's that for an analogy? He just gave me that. That's awesome. Um, and that's what it is. You know, when we are in these situations where um, we are put into uncomfortable situations and places, um, he definitely stretches us. He definitely feeds us and he definitely has us seeking him, but he also provides. And I know, Diana, you will see that happening for you too. Um, he takes care of us all and he, and he has been taking care of my family this whole time. It has been amazing to see what he has been doing. Um, we've gotten down to the nitty gritty and, and just as we're at the nitty gritty, we get what we need. So just keep believing and keep trusting. As hard as it is to be patient, you can fight the patient thing, you can fight God's timing thing, but don't fight trusting and believing that he's going to take care of you because it's just a given. Tammy says, struggling with this decluttering task, just want to throw out everything and start over, but that would not be the right thing to do, trying to keep only what we will actually use. Girl, I so hear that, it's so funny. There were times, and right now, um, the mountain boy and I, when we were out on Monday, he got some more totes so that he can pack up the rest of his bedroom. We're gonna get all his stuff down to the cabin so it's all in one spot. And I'm gonna empty that spare bedroom so that I can work on it. I'm going to get some uh, drywall in there and start doing the mudding and get that painted and um, probably paint the floor uh, or maybe find uh, inexpensive flooring, but get that taken care of. But there have been times when I have been going through stuff. It's so funny. I just want to start pitching it all or, and, and more so giving it away. I've given so much to the church and it just feels so good to get it out of here and to be down to that bare, bare minimum. It really, really feels awesome. And I totally get what you're saying. Uh, so I will be praying for you on that and I know everybody else will be too. It is a struggle when you're going through all that stuff. And I think I said I had stuff in my office that I was hoping to get rid of. Well, I found a door, a door opened there for me too to get rid of um, all my old computers and um, put some money back in our pocket. And same with old phones. I, you know, I hate to give those away or sell those because I never know if all my material, all my stuff's going to be removed from them. And I found a service that will enable me to, to do that. So, and also get a little bit for the phone. So I hear you. I'm praying for you. Um, it is a definitely a blessed feeling to know when you finally get to that point where you're down to the bare necessities. Shelley replied to Diana's, I know having food sitting there waiting to be used is so nice. If you cannot get to the grocery, if you cannot get to the grocery store, no, wait, I have my own grocery store and, and I know all the ingredients and can say them. Exactly. Exactly. And that's the biggest thing. And, and, um, that's a great comfort. And, and being able to have everything, I'm always um, equipped when we go into the winter that we have everything we need to make everything we need. So if I need to make ranch dressing, I can make ranch dressing. I just need to throw my ingredients together. If, if I need to, um, if I run out of milk, I can make milk. I have coconut powder on hand. You know, um, I have nuts on hand that I could make my own milks that way also. 
having all those things on hand, having all the spices, having all the main raw ingredients on hand to make whatever you could absolutely possibly need is just such a comfort and so huge. I can't, I can't even remember what it feels like to have to shop to get all that stuff. It's just such a nice feeling. So you do get a little spoiled and that's where you got to learn to trust that God is going to certainly um, provide and, and provide for our needs. Good morning, Charles. You have a great day as well. So this is the other aspect of it. Now we talked about physical fitness, we talked about mental phys fitness, and in, 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 in that we've also talked about spiritual fitness. And like I said, that the more uh, we go through these things, the more God is making us thirsty for Him. and. Here's where the resistance training comes in. This was just could not have been more perfect this morning. I love how God just put this on my lap. Submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. This is a great truth. Have you ever watched someone doing resistance training? They get stronger every day as they press more and more weight. That's how to view the verse, resist the devil. Satan is out to do three, three things, kill, steal, and destroy. Great truth. And and destroy what? He's going to destroy everything. Everything God has given you. And he doesn't play fair. He, using a whole arsenal of weapons. He'll attack your mind, your health, your marriage, your children, your finances, and your character. And if you're a spiritual weakling, he'll crush you. Satan studies you. He knows your quitting points. And he'll push you to the brink every chance he gets. So what should you do? Push back and keep pushing. Use every spiritual weapon God has given you. Prayer, praise, his word, and fellowship, and community here, guys. It's time to turn the tables on the enemy and start using him as your spiritual gym. I love that. It gives me a whole new picture, kind of like that picture of uh, the lion that Diana shared with me two weeks ago. The Amplified Bible talks about the sword that the spirit wields, which is the word of God. When you're filled with God's spirit, he will fight in you, through you, and for you. When that happens, Satan reaches the place where he knows he can't defeat you on a particular front. So what does he do? He attacks you on a different one. But with victory after victory being chalked up, you develop the boldness and the strength to defeat him on that front too. With enough resistance training under your belt, you'll experience the joy of walking in the truth of this wonderful promise. God will soon crush Satan under your feet. It's time to turn the tables on the enemy. So guys, this makes me cheer out loud because what have I been saying all these weeks about how I have come to a place that I am not leaving my joy and happiness behind, that I am I am able to redirect myself constantly to a place of joy and happiness. That's because all year long I have fought him hard and I am now in a place of resistance training. I love it and that's exactly what it is. That is exactly how I am able to stay in this place. Yes, I grow tired and I grow weary because I have to constantly be fighting him. but. It's a good place. It's a good place to be. That tired and weary means that I am going to rest and I'm going to sleep and I am going to renew and I am going to come back fighting and I'm going to keep pushing and I'm going to keep on pushing and I'm going to keep him at bay and keep my strength. Ephesians 6, I shared it last week. Put on your armor every day, guys. And, you know, preparedness even though this is the month of preparedness and people view that very different, they view it as prepping and homesteading and, and being prepared and wilderness preparedness. But that's also where we are short-sighted in that this is also a spiritual preparedness. We need to be prepared because he is going to keep attacking us, especially if we are Christians who are seeking a strong faith. We might start out weak, and if you are a weakling in your faith, all you need to do 
And that means that you are new in your faith, or maybe you've just grown to a weak place because of the situation you're in. It doesn't, it's not a bad thing. What that means is you need to be strong in your faith and ask for prayer. And there is nothing wrong with that. That is a spiritually mature person that is willing to ask for prayer and, and, be, and, and be bold enough to ask for that. We need to do that. We need to keep fighting him because in our levels of preparedness, just like where Diana and I are at, we're, we're working out of our larder. You know, he wants us to be afraid, intimidated, worried, and, and every time you go in there to, to feel some kind of knot in your stomach. I refuse to do that. I know God is going to provide. And when I open my freezer and there is another container of chicken in there, I don't know how I still have chicken left. There should have only been 10 meals several weeks ago. And I still have meals of chicken. I still have elk roast. I still have elk loin. I still have deer steaks. That meat is there. I should not have it, but it's there. And I know God will keep providing. I am giddy. He's, he's defeated. I am giddy because God is showing him up. And God will continue to show him up. And we need to be strong enough to understand that the enemy is trying to seep in. Keep our physical fitness up. Keep our spiritual fitness up. And get into resistance training, guys. There is so much power in being able to hold our ground. And to be able to hold our joy and happiness. And know that no matter how grim and how ugly things might look there's still gonna be a silver lining and God is going to provide. I told you guys last week, if we were to lose this house and be out for winter, we will still be these cheery same people and we're gonna figure it out and we are gonna persevere and we are gonna trust God and know that the plan ahead is gonna be really amazing. And he's just walked us and delivered us from something that wasn't healthy for us. If he's gonna provide this house for us for winter, this is where we need to be. We're going to take great comfort in being here and be thankful that he has a plan. Our plan is a flesh plan. His plan is a life plan. And we got to remember that and we got to hold tight to that. I hope, I hope and pray that as we have been walking this out, that you are seeing God's hand, you are seeing God's blessing, you are seeing renewal, you are seeing re-strengthening, you are seeing warriors being built up. And you know, you've also seen us weak. Last week I was tired and I was wore out. I'm human. I'm going to be. You know, I am I am I am not superwoman. Uh and, and I do weaken, no different than anybody else. But I also have a strong faith and that faith carries me and I want to see you guys get to that point. And the way you get there is you read the Bible, you take time with God, you get involved in, in listening to things that encourage you and build on you. And um, it's just an amazing place to be. I know that we've been walking out a really rough thing, but this has been an amazing walk to see how God is using us, to see how we are able to help other people, to see how God is building this community where everybody is growing and everybody is is maturing and everybody's prayers are being answered and to see God's hand in place and to see God coming together and building a strong community has been amazing and just the blessings God has been putting on us and you know guys the more perseverant we are the more stronger we are in our faith and the more willing we are to let him renew us and just keep pulling us through you got to remember to take it one day and at a time one day at a time. That's all we are meant to do. And when we can make it through one day at a time. Oh, please do, Chad. Share. Share. Um, you know, that is renewal in itself. That is resistance training. I want to quick get something while you share that, Chad. I want to share something from Summit.
Oh, I hope your message shares, Chad, because last week I saw you shared a couple things and I didn't see it on the screen while I was live. Ooh, that's a good one. And I got to see it all, Diana. Diana says, we had a similar situation when delivering Thanksgiving meals several years ago. Our group left with a certain number of meals for those on our list after giving out more meals. <laughs> At each location that we were prepared for, we would count what was left and at every stop we had what we needed. Oh, that's so awesome. That's so awesome. We ended up with one left at the end of the day that we gave to a family we knew. We still use that phrase today when he multiplies our supplies. Oh my gosh, that is just so awesome. That is so awesome. And you know, to see this stuff firsthand, guys, you know, it's like I said before, I could be I could be under a basket and keeping my light from shining, but my word, the stuff he has been doing in our lives and the way he has been working in our lives and how visible it has been, I can't not share it because it's just it's it's been amazing. And thank you for sharing that, Diana. That's just really, really awesome. Chad says, if you want to hear God, read his word. If you want to hear God loudly, read his word out loud. You know, that is so true. That is so, so true. Thank you for sharing that because I go out and I'll sit on my swing or I'll sit on the back porch and when I go out there and I'm alone, like when I do it in here, there's always disruptions. And no, I'm not, I'm not pinging on my men. Um, it's also the dogs. There's just this disruptions. And I read the Bible a lot, but I'll tell you what, when you read the Bible out loud, it just it goes through you 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 under you hear it you understand it you feel it there's just such a difference so i love being able to take that time and go outside and just be where i feel him enveloping me to start with and then to be able to read it um also listening to it but i find that that voice gets monotonous so i do i do like reading it out loud myself and thank you for sharing that chad Chad has been walking out a pretty rough thing this year too. And you know, the power of prayer is so huge. And to see God moving and to see God working in our community and knowing that we're all loving up on one another and really lifting each other through, through these struggles. You know, God is gonna carry us all through. Terry, and June have been having a tough walk this year and it's been it's been really hard for them and you know I can see God's hand at work there and it's just a really it's really an awesome thing to see how God is is moving in each and every one of our lives and I'm so thankful you know I hope you guys get the renewal from this each week as I do you know I'm the one sitting here talking and sometimes I feel like I'm rambling on and praying that you guys are getting something from what I'm rambling on. But I walk away from this so renewed because you guys are sharing your walks and your stories with me. I want to share this with you guys. Um, I had mentioned about a spot on my back that has been a concern. Um, I have not gone to a medical doctor to take care of it because... We are in such a financial quandary. I don't want to put us deeper in. But it started to really, really bother me two weeks ago. And it was really, it was keeping me awake at night. It was painful and it was causing me struggles. I've been using a lot of natural things and I haven't really been seeing any positive changes. It's actually was getting bigger. And, and anyway, I was really praying. I asked people to really help me pray. And I finally decided I was going to go to a medical doctor and have a biopsy done, have it looked at. I have made seven attempts to contact the doctor's office. The first two times she had to hang up on me because they had an emergency in their office. Now this is a big, fairly big facility and there's a lot of people working there. So the fact that they had to hang up on me because they had an emergency was really weird and twice Okay, so then she calls me back, I missed the call. I called back, I got disconnected twice, and then I called back and left two messages and I still haven't gotten a return call. So, you know how I'm now viewing that. I'm not, I wasn't supposed to do that. I put a post out on my Facebook page that I was looking for black salve and I was also looking for Manuka honey. Um, Manuka honey is very medicinal 
and very drawing and the black salve I was looking for was a drawing salve and um, I met up with a friend to get the black salve she messaged me right away and said she had some and she's local here so I met up with her um, and in talking to her um, she mentioned that she was using frankincense and I've been using frankincense all along but the difference um, that I found is that she told me that she was saturating a band-aid with frankincense and putting it on and putting it on at night when I got home I realized that the black salve she gave me is not the black salve I was looking for and uh, I thought well isn't that something you know I'll try the band-aid and the frankincense and I also had um, new communication with a new community member who has joined and asked for prayer she found me through my podcast and uh, Rachel joined us last week um, I friended Rachel and when I mentioned that I needed the Manuka honey Miss Rachel messaged me right away and said that she was going to send me some I got that in the mail yesterday and along with that I want to give her a shout out because um, it's the right thing to do she blessed me greatly I got peppermint I got lemongrass and I got lavender these are homemade goat's milk soaps that she makes on her farm she has a dairy farm a goat dairy farm and um, it is four mile run that's probably backwards it's four mile farm four mile farm and it's the number four mile farm at gmail.com if you are interested in getting some of her all-natural soaps so check her out but that is Rachel from four mile farm and Rachel I'm just giving you a big shout out and uh, is it mill Christensen thank you for joining by the way and she says use lemongrass melaleuca and frankincense in this order two times daily I will try that but what I, I have to share is that I have been doing the frankincense straight on the band-aid and it has actually reduced in size and it is um, really scabbing up I know it sounds gross but major change major major change and I'm gonna use I'm gonna switch off and on using the um, Manuka honey as well but I will also try that so thank you for sharing that um, but I was totally excited to be able to get some positive um, results there but what is also funny is how God worked I finally came to a place and that was probably because the enemy put a little bit of fear in me uh, that I wasn't realizing because I was getting pain and I decided to go the medical route and then God blocked all of those efforts and now I am getting positive results after three years and I would not recommend letting something like that go for that long but we've been in this position and have not had the funding and I was uh, fearful of adding additional expense or let me just say I wasn't fearful I didn't want to add additional expense because we're already we were already coming down being taken down by medical finances I didn't want to add to that but our health is important and I don't encourage you guys to go the route that I did but that's what I chose to do plus I also choose to do everything in my power first naturally before I go to a medical doctor just because of the bad experiences we have had and have seen um, but thank you for sharing that I really really appreciate that and I will try that and I've actually been using that I created a cancer cream out of coconut oil with lemongrass melaleuca and frankincense along with helichrysum and black raspberry seed oil um, black raspberry seed oil is also supposed to be very good in healing such things but I think that one thing I've learned through this process is that heavy saturation really made a huge difference um, in quickly getting rid of that so um, now, there is so much to be said about natural health and I want to share with you guys um, the Herbal Academy is um, having a back-to-school special and you can go to treyerwilderness.com slash H A N E and um, sign up for their herbal classes they are top-notch I have taken several of them um, and that is where when I am able I will be investing my money because that is something that I want to learn wholeheartedly is to 
have and be certified in natural medicine so that I can take this a whole step further. Um, I've been involved in natural medicine since I'm 14, but it is a great passion and I have a great desire to help um, heal people and, and help people on their journeys. Um, so definitely check that out if you are able. They also have a lot of free webinars, free classes. I shared a couple of the free classes they had a while back. So don't miss out on those. Um, when there is something going on, you can be sure I will share it here and I will also share it on our Facebook page. And I also share it in our newsletter. But guys, it's really important that we stick together as a community, that we continue to lift each other, and that we learn from one another. Chad's uh, suggestion today was a very, very big one. Reading his word, getting in his word, and also reading it out loud um, is extremely powerful and one of the, I feel, one of the best ways to really form a relationship with God aside from praying. Uh, I get a lot of my direction and so does the mountain man by reading the Bible. God shows us things and like I said, that's just so awesome the way God works in our family. We've asked for this. We've asked him to show us both the same thing so that we know that he is communicating wholeheartedly with us and sharing direction and that we are not branching off on our own uh, desires versus his and and that is huge and also having a family that is prayerful um, like the mountain man shared last last week you know his mom has always had a, a plaque on the wall that said a family that prays together stays together and that is a very powerful statement and I pray for that and wish that for each and every one of you because that is a powerful powerful place to be and um, that is something that has really strengthened our marriage is being able to uh, pray together. We pray together in the morning, we pray together at night, and it's a great, it's just such a comforting thing to end our day that way. And I think I mentioned it last week too, is it's really neat because sometimes we don't speak things to one another, but when we're praying, you know, we're thankful for certain things that come out in our prayers. So, um, uh, there's confirmation and um, strengthening and renewal in our marriage because of words spoken through prayer and it's just pretty neat it's really a really cool thing to do and also in doing so we teach that to the mountain boy and um, our, our kids see and learn from example and I know so many of you out there are such powerful examples to your children and and that is huge that is huge because you know, in a, in a couple weeks, it's that statement in that from the Bible um, to raise your children up so that when they are uh, gone, you know, they, they that's still instilled in them. And, and that is a powerful thing uh, to know that that is our job and to raise them up so that they are good, solid adults with good, with a good footing. It's really, really powerful, really, really important. And Guys, like I mentioned, if you need prayer, or you know somebody that needs prayer, please don't hesitate to leave it in the comments below. You are welcome to email me at prayer at treyerwilderness.com. Have a new email for that, um, just so that that stuff does not ever get misplaced in all the other hundreds of emails I get. Prayer at treyerwilderness.com. You can also private message me on social media. I check it all. I may not be able to respond to everybody. I've been getting really bad with that because of our, our immediate chaos and, and all my responsibilities. Uh, so forgive me, but know that we read everything and eventually we will respond. Um, but guys, thank you so much for joining me today. You're all in my prayers. Uh, I pray for our community. I pray for the prayer requests that we know and we pray, we pray that daily. So. Know you are lifted and, um, and don't be afraid to practice your resistance training, to practice uh, your, your need for physical fitness as well as mental fitness and, and focus on preparedness, but don't focus on it as just a, a temporary thing. Focus on it as if you are preparing for your future, because uh, it's basically what you want to be doing. You want to be preparing for your future. And as you do that also, you know, our children watch, not just 
our prayer moments and our faith moments, but they watch everything we do. And, and teaching kids, like I mentioned before, when Austin um, left and was living in the apartment, you know, he, he wanted to live closer to town and that wasn't really closer to town, but it was a different environment than what we have here. There were neighbors and there, and, and, you know, he realized while he was there that he truly does in, enjoy, um, our environment and, uh, sorry. And, uh, what we've created here. He he realized that quickly that as much as he thought he would have liked being in town, he really enjoys our solitude. So, you know, you raise your kids up and they and they they are going to um want to try things for themselves, but they also know that what's been instilled in them. So, keep that in mind. Um Chad, I see you said something, but I'm not sure what it goes along with. Um, oh, I'm sorry. I see that you did make another comment. If you don't know Jesus or haven't heard the gospel, please PM me. God bless you. And God bless you too, Chad. Chad is a tremendous prayer warrior. He is a tremendous brother in Christ. And when he says that, he means that wholeheartedly. And the same applies for us. You know, if you don't know Jesus and you want to know more about Jesus, you want you have questions, you want to hear the gospel, please don't hesitate to reach out in any way, shape, or form. And how is that for confirmation that we have such a tremendous community of loving caring Christian people, both brothers and sisters. So I hope and pray that those of you that are new, that are watching and watching on the replay, that you realize the comfort spot you've come to. Um, this is a place where we build people, we don't break people. And that goes both at a personal level and a spiritual level. And uh, we're all trying here to walk the walk and talk the talk. We are all sinners, we all fail, we all fall short. But one of the things that we do have here is that we get back up, we put on our armor, and we keep going. And we are here for everybody. So, guys, I'm going to say a prayer for us today and let you get back to your day. I appreciate you joining me. I appreciate your feedback. I appreciate your love for our family and your constant prayers. So I'm going to say a prayer here. Papa, I just come to you this morning and I thank you for what you are doing in our community, not just in our lives, but how you are working in each and everyone's lives. I ask that you wrap your loving arms around everyone here and that watches the replay. I ask that you strengthen them and give them courage and help them to get into uh, resistance training and keep the enemy at bay and learn to discern his evil tactics because people don't realize how how abundant and how much spiritual warfare is in our world and how much it affects us daily. And I just ask that you give everybody the courage in the walk that they are walking right now to be patient and trusting and believe that you will shine, that your will and your timing is more valuable than we could ever imagine. And that we just need to focus our eyes on you, focus our eyes on the prize, and just keep walking out our lives day to day and to lean on you for understanding, for direction, and, and for your love and mercies and grace. And I just thank you for these loving people that join me each week, that love our family, that pray for us, and that, that uh, are constantly uh, chewing your ear off on our behalf. And I just ask that you wrap your loving arms around them and just help them through their days and to let them feel your peace and your comfort and, and your presence. And I ask that you um, help those that may have uh, be in a place of weak Christianity or maybe new Christians that that need extra loving to not be afraid to reach out to Chad or to us and, and to ask for guidance or help or additional prayers. We all need it. 
from time to time and some of us need it daily and there's nothing wrong with that as we walk out the 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 walk that we each are given you know we we get tired and we get weary and that's going to be part of our walk we aren't promised perfection we aren't promised a bed of roses but we are promised your gift of eternal life and we are thankful for that and thankful for your grace and your mercy and your forgiveness regularly and just your love and I just ask that you be with everyone this week, empower them, strengthen them, and, and help them to lean on you. And we thank you for what you're going to do in each of our lives and ask this in your holy and precious name of Jesus. Amen. Diana says, have a great rest of the week and restful weekend. Good morning, Angela. I'm glad you're checking in. You probably just caught me just praying. So we are signing off, but you can watch the replay. I'm glad you joined us and hope everything's well for you. And guys, if there's things that you're struggling with, whether it's in preparedness, whether it has to do with um, your spiritual walk, with your physical walk, um, with your mental walk, you know, Please don't be afraid to ask for help, ask for guidance, share with us things that you need to focus more on. You know, um, if it's fermenting, if it's canning, um, what, whatever it is, if, if you're struggling through something and just need more courage, whatever it is, don't be afraid to ask. Um, that's what we are here for. And I'm, I'm anxious to see what this winter brings because, um, I'm believing that I will have more time to do more of what I enjoy doing, and I look really forward to sharing that with you guys. So again, thank you for sharing your time with me this morning. I love you all. This is so renewing and so refreshing. Please do, Angela. Please PM me. I would love to hear from you. And, and guys, just have a fabulous rest of your day. Find your joy and peace and happiness and remember to look for the blessings. They're stepping stones that will keep you moving forward and, and just uh, hang on tight for the ride. God's got your back. He's leading the way and he'll carry you if you need to. So love you all. God bless. I'll see you next Wednesday at 1030. Take care.